President Biden has refused to comment on Trump's indictment, but he held his first official campaign event yesterday in Philadelphia, touting his record in office. I'm looking forward to this campaign. I want you to know why. Because you've got a story to tell. We've got a story to tell. We've got a record to run on. And most importantly, we're not only changing this country, we're transforming it. Joining us now is Democratic Senator Sheldon Whitehouse of Rhode Island. Senator Whitehouse, thank you for joining us. I, I want to get to the Trump indictment in, in a moment, but first, uh, that campaign event was the first for Biden, even though he announced he was running 54 days ago. Does he need to pick up the pace and be a little more aggressive? No, I think he's got a lot of time ahead of him, a lot of runway, and um, I think just laying a good solid base of these strong endorsements like he got out of the environmental community last week and he got out of the labor community at this big rally is uh, just the way to go. I don't know that people are interested in a whole lot of campaign noise out of him, and uh, I think he's doing it right. But let me ask you, you, you said recently this about President Biden. You said, I think everybody would certainly like a younger Joe Biden. You know, I think that people are concerned about an 80-year-old president, and I think that's an issue that President Biden is going to have to deal with on the campaign. So how does he deal with that question, with the age question? How does he address it? Well, I, I went on to complete that sentence that you quoted uh, to say that he can do that by continuing to talk about his successes about the experience, about the wisdom, about the sagacity that he brings to this job, uh, and the record that he's shown to the American people by virtue of those uh, characteristics and qualities that he has. And I think we're going to see enormous amounts of new construction, whether it's infrastructure. Uh, factory construction in America is soaring right now. And when you're building factories, there's a lot more building that happens after the factory's up as you're building the products in the factory. So he's got a really good story to tell about the end of COVID, the reduction of inflation, the explosion in infrastructure, jobs, and uh, manufacturing. And I think that's going to be a really solid baseline for him to uh, go into the voters uh, in the coming, what is it now, 15 months, 16 months? If, if Trump wins the nomination, Biden would find himself running against somebody uh, that is possibly under trial in maybe multiple uh, cases uh, prosecuted by his own Justice Department. How, how do you see that playing out? Well, I think he's done a good job steering well clear of the prosecution. As you know, there are at least two firewalls between the president and this prosecution. First, he does not do business with Attorney General Garland. He does not speak to him about criminal-related matters. And second, Garland is firewalled off from this prosecution because he's appointed a special counsel. And his ability to engage with special counsel is extremely limited limited basically to violations of departmental rules and policies and procedures and so forth, which hasn't even been alleged yet. So he's a long way from uh, the special counsel prosecution, and I think that goes forward the way it should, pursuant to rule of law, pursuant to justice policy, and uh, pursuant to the very able judgment of the special counsel team. So I, that makes sense in terms of trying to convince... Uh, the country that this is not a political prosecution, especially Republicans and independents. But is there also a risk? I mean, you know, Biden is not talking about this. Other top Democrats aren't talking about this. And yet Donald Trump has made it the centerpiece of his campaign. So, you know, he's the one out there, you know, professing his innocence, attacking the Justice Department, attacking the FBI, while Biden and other top Democrats are saying we're not going to talk about the issue. Yeah, I don't think that works well for Trump, to tell you the truth. I know that's his M.O. Um, when he's involved in civil litigation, when he's, a bank is suing him for the money that he owes it, that kind of stuff, he goes into this sort of bullying, bombastic mode where he tries to make the other side as miserable as possible and hopes that they'll go away or settle on good terms. When you're dealing with a federal prosecutor, that stuff just doesn't work. It doesn't matter. It's just background noise to the federal prosecutor. So it's not going to help him at all in this case. The case is going to go forward, and as it does, we're going to learn more about it through the motion practice, through, as uh, Attorney General Garland said, through the filings that the special counsel makes in the case. So there's going to be a steady drumbeat of both activity and evidence that emerges as it properly should through the case itself.
Do you think Judge Aileen Cannon, who is, was randomly assigned to this case, she's obviously a Trump appointee, ruled favorably uh, in the past uh, for Trump, do you think that she can preside uh, over this in a way that, uh, that, that is independent? I think that's to be determined. As we all know, her first intervention in the case was uh, very badly uh, smacked down by the 11th Circuit, a conservative circuit that not only overruled her, but schooled her. And as a new judge, I'm not sure how often you want to do that. Um, so we will find out whether she goes back to regular, normal judging or continues to be a Trump advocate in a robe. Um, and the only good news about that is that her decisions can't kill off this case until after a jury is impaneled and then jeopardy has attached. So there's going to be a lot of proceedings beforehand for special counsel Jack Smith to test her behavior, to see how she's conducting herself, and to have time to move for her recusal if she's not providing proper rulings. I suspect there's a pretty good chance that she will just decide this is a good time uh, in her career for her to act like a real judge, and she'll take the correction of the 11th Circuit and act accordingly. And that would make it much harder for Donald Trump to do what he always does, which is attack judges as well. I mean, it's hard to attack somebody. Yeah, it would be very hard to attack this yeah. judge yeah. for him. So, Although I wouldn't put it past him because attack is his mode. No, no, and, and consistency is not uh, not very consistently uh, pr practiced <laughs> by, by Trump. So no. I, I, before you go, I want to ask you a question. I, I know you are longtime friends with Bobby Kennedy Jr. You guys went to uh, law school together. He supported your initial campaigns, all of your campaigns, campaigned with you. What, what do you make of his run against uh, uh, Joe Biden? And are you still in touch with him? Are you still close with him? Uh, not so much, particularly not since this uh, political episode has begun. Um, I 100 percent support President Biden. Um, I don't think that vaccines are a hoax or a scam or dangerous. Um, and I strongly, strongly support the people of Ukraine in their bid for freedom uh, under the onslaught of the Russian military, because I think that's the frontier for freedom around the world. So I think Joe Biden has those issues and others right, and I'm more than happy to support President Biden for re-election. All right, Sheldon Whitehouse joining us from Rhode Island. Thank you and happy Father's Day. Thank you, you too. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.